Demon Slayer, you're going to have to hold up a second, because if I had a nickel for every time I saw a giant fish with human-like limbs on it, I would have three nickels from just the past week of anime alone, more specifically this weekend. And it's not a lot in the grand picture, but it's pretty weird that it happened that many times. Hell's Paradise, Heavenly Delusion, Demon Slayer, Saturday to Sunday, there's something about the whatever's in the water is turning these fish into monstrosities, and I'm here for it. Genya vs. Upper Rank 4 in Demon Slayer, the Swordsmith Village arc is absolutely he. Not only do you introduce one of the coolest weapons that this show is going to have, I mean, you come in with basically a double barrel shotgun, you blow off a head, you quickly do a reload, you got a sword in the other hand. How cool can you make someone before you seemingly cut them from basically top to bottom? They stab that fool, and honestly, man, uh, <laughs> That sound effect didn't sound good. It didn't sound like a simple sound effect where like, oh yeah, a character got stabbed. No, it sounded like, and it looked like, they pulled that fool upwards, and I don't know how you heal from that, but damn, if Demon Slayer ain't playing right now. Now, full live reaction to this wonderful episode available on my Patreon if you're interested in seeing my full uncut thoughts. What's interesting is the first half of this episode is some of the goofiest Demon Slayer content by far. And it's fun, I enjoy it, but I mean... I'm thinking, okay, they're true, like, they're clearly trying to make this episode super goofy, so we come into next week thinking, oh yeah, it's not going to be too crazy, and then something's going to pop off. Nope, they quickly pop off almost after the most wholesome, weird stuff that you can see in a Demon Slayer episode. You get cute Nezuko, you get, we're tickling the swordsmith, like, it's just, it's ridiculous. And some poor bastard's coming down from having his hot springs, a bath or whatever he was doing and there's this vase there and he gets sucked in and compressed into almost nothing did you seriously just like like what what is that who the fish was did you turn that poor bastard into a fish is that why there's a fish roam in the forest is that a separate entity and that poor bastard still just alive on the staircase barely either way that's one way to transition from goofing off to oh my god there's two upper ranks Rewind to the previous season, we barely survived one upper rank, and Muzin is fully convinced the only reason that they lost an upper rank is because siblings didn't split apart from one another. Had they done that sooner, everything would have been fine. There is a bold confidence in a man who firmly believes his upper ranks are untouchable, and right now, you kind of want to believe him, because not only do you have a weird snake vase with lips for eyes, you have to deal with Upper Rank 4, who is the biggest scaredy cat. How does someone with that level of confidence, which is basically nothing, get to Upper Rank 4? Especially because they cut his head off almost immediately. Oh, you cut him off? He comes back stronger with two of them. Oh, you cut their heads off too? Now we got four of them, and each time they got more and more insane. Seemingly each have their own variety of personalities, but goddamn, if that ain't frightening, because one's flying in the sky, one's blasting you away with a wind spell, another's launching lightning bolts, and seriously, you have three incredibly talented warriors here. Actually, four if you include Nezuko, but I'm gonna say, like, we don't really, we can't really count on her too much, because if she's in that form for too long, you know, as Tanjiro says, like, she could be consumed by her demon urges. So, let's just, let's just round it down to three, right? And one of which is sword stabbed, cut upwards. I don't know how he's getting up from that. Another got blown away, is now fighting a fish in a forest because Tanjiro got through to him and now he's starting to feel a little more emotional and not so much of a dick. And Tanjiro, he's pretty much winded right now. Is this really an even playing field? No. And even if we include Nezuko and it's four on four, everyone has a handicap right now. <laughs> One's fighting a fish, not around the main boss yet. One can't be in her demon form for too long before going crazy. Tantra's already winded and wounded, and another's on his deathbed, and this fight just started. I think we're about to experience what we just saw in the previous season, where we're about to have like six episodes straight of just the craziest ass action, as we are waiting for our new sword to come in. Right now, he has another sword that he's working with, but we know damn well that at some point in this fight, the sword's gonna break, it's gonna look horrible, Swordsmith's gonna come running up, he's all buff now, and he's gonna toss him the new blade, and that's gonna come in clutch for sure. But either way, things are not looking well. And I have to say, I mean, I wasn't gonna really hype up the first half of the episode, and I'm really not going to right now either. 
but I will compliment the fact that they let you make your guard drop. You say, oh, it's, it's a fun episode, it's goofy, it's Demon Slayer, I'm having fun with it, but is this really an episode to rave about? Probably not. And by making the viewer collective be like, this is goofy, look at him tickling the Sora's master, look at them braiding Nezuko's hair, like, okay, yeah, it's, it's fun, it's, it's cute, it's goofy, but okay, my guard's dropped, I'm not expecting anything too crazy this episode. Oh, it's nighttime, it's a little more ominous, oh, why is this man walking alone, why is there a vase just sitting there, please don't touch it, you idiot, why are you going up to it? Compressed, Pancake Human Edition. Okay, you did an effective thing here. Like, is the intro of this episode necessarily needed in the exact way they did it? No, but as someone who likes the sillier side of Demon Slayer, I still found it amusing. But I think everyone can collectively agree, even if you don't like the sillier stuff of Demon Slayer, that was a good way to bait and switch you. Like, oh yeah, this is gonna be a basic episode. Oh shit, what, what did we just see here? And there's two of them? Oh, and we got a fish in the forest? Like... Where is the army when you need it? Now we're three episodes into the Swordsmith Village arc, and I heard this this season pops off. I always hear rumblings each season like, ah oh, yeah, this actually isn't that great of a season, but collectively I always hear like, yeah, this is a crazier season than the last. And honestly, if this last half of this episode is anything to go off of, and knowing what they did in the previous season with the Red Light District, that was one long fight that it didn't drag out, it didn't feel like it was long just for the sake of it, no, like it collectively just kept getting crazier and crazier. I don't know how long this will be, I don't want to know how long it will be, but either way, I am very, very excited to see what they do, because honestly, as talented as characters seem to be, the upper ranks are wild, and the fact that, you know, every, like, we're not even going up against upper rank one, we're not even going up against Muzin, like, the fact that they're struggling at the start of the battle this hard against, yes, powerful demons, but not even close to the worst they'll have to deal with. Each time we lose characters, or each time we somehow get a taste of victory, it's so small. It's so small in the grand picture that you still say, how in the hell is Tantro going to do this? But damn if that isn't the Demon Slayer experience. This was an absolutely incredible episode. The first half of this episode, fine content, fun content, I enjoyed it, but it's not 10 out of 10, it's just fine Demon Slayer content. But what makes it so good to be a part of an episode like this is it's it's used to make you drop your guard for the big punchline, which is 10 out of 10 Demon Slayer content. Emotional, action-packed, well-animated, and damn, there's a variety of weapons and attacks, and it is gonna be bloody. Thoughts and feelings yourself down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell, of course, so you can get notified when I upload on the channel, and like I mentioned, we do have that full live reaction available on my Patreon if you're interested. And while you're there, you can also get a video shoutout. So today, we have Jordan, Migs021, Jornis Pierre, and Fanny Dupont-Hotty. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.